Oh my gosh, back again, Lost Mine of Fandelva Dungeon Master Guide. Uh, it's, uh, it's a warm day here in New Zealand. Um, so I'm just doing my sound check, making sure all of my bits and pieces are working correctly. And once I know that everything is, that's great. Hi Christian, how's it going? Salutations to you too. S sound is coming through all right, that seems good. Excellent. Okay, all right, I'll pull out my earplugs. <clears throat> now, if you're re-watching the live stream, you will find the start time <clears throat> down in the description. Oh, hang on, give me a second, I'm just going to have another drink of water. Hi, Nick. I have sort of developed a bit of a croak. I don't know why. Let's see if I can blow it all out. <clears throat> all right, so hopefully everything is working correctly. Okay, now, um, normally what I do is I present everything uh, during the live stream first, and then once I've presented everything, if you're part of the live stream, I will open it up for questions, feedback, or you can just say hi to me, or you can say thank you, or you can say Fred, um, I didn't like it, or I needed more, or, you know, this, pretty much this is an opportunity in a forum for you guys to be able to interact and talk about the Lost Mine of Fandelva, and I'm focusing on Elmar Barthen of Barthen Provisions for today. So let's get started, for those of you who are ready, and um, I'm not going to be keeping a close track on the, on the chat box until near the end, okay, because I've got to cycle through images. All right, here we go. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And in fact, I'm talking about the Dungeons and Dragons 5e starter set. And we're going to talk about the Lost Mine of Fandalva. This is a Dungeon Master Guide. I like to say this is a Dungeon Master Guide for the Lost Mine of Fandalva. It is not a player's guide. So if you are playing the game and you're a player playing a character, this is not the video for you. I do have many videos that you can watch, but this is the one that your Dungeon Master will not be happy if you watch. So leave it alone. Um, you will get that information when you interact with, uh, with your Dungeon Master. Now I'm covering today Alma Barthen of Barthen Provisions. Now, Elmer Barthen is one of the first NPCs that the players will interact with when they get to Fandolin. Now, Elmer is the owner of Barthen Provisions, which is a trading post. It is the biggest trading post in um, Fandolin. It, uh, its shelves are stocked with ordinary goods, so it doesn't have a whole lot of magic items or accessories or expendable consumable magic stuff that you can purchase ordinary goods and products are sold here. Barthen's provisions is open from sunrise to sunset. He does not sell weapons or armor. Uh, anything like that is not stocked at the trading post. You can buy such things as adventuring gear that costs less than 25 gold pieces that you will find in the player's handbook or whatever your dungeon master determines is suitable for your particular adventure. Um, what I wanted to point out is uh, its basic location, uh, Barthen's Provisions, and as the map shows, Barthen's Provisions, which is sort of the top middle, and then off to the side you'll see Barthen's Home is actually situated very, very close to his work site. So uh, if you're wondering how things are lined up, that's where he is. So he doesn't have to travel very far, he's just going to walk across the road um, or the, the pathway to get to his workplace each day. Elmar will direct weapons and armor purchases that the player's characters might want to uh, be involved in to the Lion Shield Costa. The Lion Shield Costa is the place where you want to go and buy stuff. It's not very far away, um, so, and, and Fan, Fandolin is, is a small place. It's not like you, you won't be able to find it. you probably be able to see the signs of pretty much everything anywhere within, <laughs> within this little town. Alma is a, a lean individual. He's lean. He's a balding human male shopkeeper. He's in about his 50s, so he's about 50 years old, and he's got a kindly manner to himself. So if you're wondering sort of what, how to play this individual, um, it's not the abrupt individual. He is, he's a pretty sort of straight um, arrow. He's not going to be played in a, an unusual manner. Barthen employs a couple of young clerks, uh, their names are Ander and Thistle, 
who help sort of unload the wagon or load the wagon uh, when it needs to um, either take supplies off or put supplies on there to transport them to a different location. Or these, uh, these shop helpers, you might say, will wait on customers when Alma is not available. He's not in the store and not in the trading post. Barthen is expecting a wagon of supplies from the player's characters. So when it comes to um, playing that section of it out, um, you will find that he does expect them to be delivering supplies. He doesn't know when it's going to take place, but he knows it should be in the next few days. Um, and he's expecting that delivery to, to be delivered to him, not for them to show up with a wagon of supplies and deliver it to somebody else in Phandalin. Should the player's characters decide they want to sort of barter or negotiate or see if they can find somebody who will give them a better price. So he is actually expecting to be paid because an arrangement has been made uh, between Gundren and Barthen to actually bring these supplies in. So messing with that can make a, uh, make a story a little bit complicated and certainly would put Alma Barthen on the, um, the negative side of the player's characters if they were to do something like that. Now the player's characters are transporting their wagon from Neverwinter uh, through to Phandalin. There will be some trouble along the way but eventually they should get there provided they don't wind up with the entire party getting wiped out which I don't think should necessarily happen um, and even if it does you know that's what captures for. You capture them, them and you work through it that way. Now, uh, Barthen will pay each of the characters 10 gold pieces for the wagon supplies. Now that's 10 gold pieces each character involved. So if you have six characters in total, it's gonna to cost him 60 gold. If there's four characters, it's gonna cost him 40 gold. It's pretty simple, it's not complicated at all. Now what happens if the players want more? What if the players decide that um, when they show up at his trading post, they actually want to haggle and negotiate the price. I'm going to talk more about that because I know it will tend to come up. It certainly was a topic in my game, so I don't expect it to be any different for you. Um, I will discuss that. I don't think it's going to be quite uh, what they were expecting in terms of how that will work out. So once they arrive there with their wagon supplies, they can unload it. Um, Barthen will get his um, little helpers to help unload the, lo um, the, the stores. Now it, it includes many different mining supplies and all of the information in terms of what is provided is in, in, it's in the very first chapter of the adventure. I don't want to go over that quite so much because I don't think it's quite as important, but essentially it is just a mixture of uh, mining tools supplies, goods, foods, things like that. Things that uh, you would need if you were mining, things you would need if you were supplying a town with general goods and so forth. What about Gundren Rockseeker? Um, Barthen is not actually aware that Gundren Rockseeker has been captured unless the characters tell him. So he will not know what has happened to Gundren because Gundren has not arrived. He was expecting Gundren to arrive, but he never showed up. It will take the player's characters telling him for him to know anything about that. If that does actually take place and the player's characters say, look, uh, Gundren was um, captured, then um, he will be quite saddened by the fact that Gundren has been captured or is possibly dead because maybe the player's characters don't know if he's perished or he's been captured. So it's completely open to that. What about uh, if they actually bring Gundren back with the wagon supply? So in other words, they make their way through Cragmore hideout, then they manage to make their way through Cragmore castle, rescue Gundren, and then bring the supplies into uh, Phandalin and bring them to Barthen's provisions. Then he will be really happy to see Gundren. And of course, I always find it um, a dangerous thing to do when you start having one of your NPCs talking to another NPC where you find yourself talking to yourself and the players and players just sit there sort of baffled and amused as you take her on the role of two characters communicating with, e with each other. I would not do that if I were you. Um, you're welcome to give it a go if you really want, but I wouldn't think it is a wise thing to consider, considering it just looks a little bit silly after a while. 
Alma will encourage the player's characters to try and rescue Gundren Rockseeker if they have not done so so far. Um, Alma considers himself a friend to the dwarves. Uh, that includes Gundren Rockseeker and his brothers. He is quite excited by the fact that Gundren has discovered the lost mine of Fandelva. Um, so that lost mine, or it, which is part of the Fandelva Pact, he knows it's in nearby hills, but he does not know the exact location. So if the player's characters are trying to get that information from Barthen, he can't provide you with that because um, Gundren Rockseeker and his brothers have been keeping it a closely hidden secret so that nobody knows what's going on. Elmer will mention the fact that uh, Gundren has two more Rockseeker brothers. One is Tharden and the other is Nundro. And they are supposed to be, as far as he's um, concerned, they're supposed to be camped outside of town somewhere. He doesn't know their exact location, so if they say, look, do you know where the brothers are located, where did they camp? He can't tell them that answer because he doesn't actually know exactly where they are because they wouldn't tell him. Alma hasn't seen the dwarf brothers in about 10 days or a 10 day and expects them to resupply quite soon because they haven't resupplied so um, they, they are expected any time. Barthen is actually unaware that um, Thardin is dead and that Nundro is a prisoner of Nesnar the Black Spider. So if you were um, thinking that he was aware of that sort of inf information, it's the player's characters who will find out that information when they finally find um, the, the Lost Mine itself. When they, when they reach uh, Wave Echo Cave, then they will find out or that's the first time anybody finds out what happened to the other two brothers. Barthen's news. Now, I want to be really careful about how I present some of this information because it, it is tempting to lead into too many adventure hooks too quickly, which is why I'm breaking up all of the NPCs in Fandolin into individual videos so that you don't do that. Um, but we need to talk about business, Barthen's business. There is a section, and now you'll find most of this information is on page 16 of the adventure, so you can go there and find what you need from there if you uh, feel that would be more helpful to you. And certainly I consider I would consider reading that information anyway. A lot of this, this, this information is already taken from the adventure, and I have added a few things to it myself. If the player's characters ask about business, or the town and its welfare, uh, Elmar can tell them that the red brands are shaking down local businesses. This is supposed to be another adventure hook to get the player's characters, hopefully, to help out um, Fandolin and um, dispose of the red brands, or at least shut them down. So they have been shaking down. Protection money has been paid. They're not a, not a nice group. Um, there are certainly uh, benefits to helping the town out by disposing of the red brands. So it, the player's characters could do the town a huge favour by bringing the red brands to justice if they decide to do so. The red brands hang out at the Sleeping Giant Tap House, so if they want to know where they can find the red brands, that's where they would be hanging out. I would suggest to you that you make no mention of the red brands with Elma, uh, unless it moves the player's characters towards rescuing Gundren Rockseeker. I think that is more important than worrying about the red brands. In my adventure, it wound up playing out this way, where uh, they dealt with um, being ambushed, they dealt with Cragmore Hideout, um, they knew that uh, they needed to rescue Gundren, they didn't know where Gundren was, um, they decided to bring the wagon to Fandolin, uh, they then encountered the Red Brands, they decided to deal with the Red Brands, even though they wanted to go and rescue Gundren, but they didn't know where he was, and then um, they found out where Gundren was and where Cragmore Castle was from the Red Brand thugs. I laced it in there. But that's how my adventure played out. Your adventure doesn't necessarily have to be that way. There is room for movement. But I would suggest that you make no mention of the red brands unless, and particularly their involvement in how the town operates, unless it moves the player's characters towards res rescuing Gundren Rockseeker, or 
um, they have already rescued Gundren Rockseeker or they know that Gundren Rockseeker is already dead because they've already been to Cragmore um, Castle and uh, they've already dealt with that part of the adventure. Barthen will not pay the players more for the wagon supplies and the rationale behind it is if he pays them more he can't make a profit so it makes no sense whatsoever for him to do so even though the players might be wanting to get more funds out of the situation than they are currently getting supplied which is only 10 gold pieces uh, per, per character. Elmer Barthen is already paying protection money to the red brand gang so for him to uh, pay additional money for the supplies and to be paying the red brands that's going to cause problems because not only is he not going to have enough money to be able to cover cover it and actually resell the product he's also going to find that the red brands will more than likely be um, keeping a close eye on any visitors to the town and a big wagon full of supplies will attract their attention and so they would also be expecting to particularly if he's willing to pay more to somebody else for these supplies than he would normally pay then the red brands are going to expect a bigger cut as well so he would not go down that route unless of course it starts to get nasty and let's just hope the players characters don't go down that path if the party want information on Fandolin Elmer will provide information, general information, if they are not threatening to him and they deliver the wagon supplies to him at the agreed price that he had originally set out with Gundren Rockseeker. Threatening Gundren, uh, sorry, threatening Elmer Barthen will attract the Red Brand's attention. So if there is sort of a, an altercation between the player's characters and um, Elmer Barthen, then the Red Brands will ste certainly step in because remember, um, Elma is paying protection money to be protected by the red brands from anybody else stepping in and taking their turf. So they will definitely make an appearance and I would just fast track the first encounter that the player's characters are supposed to have with the red brands if they decide to sort of start threatening um, Elma Barthen and trying to get a higher price or they want to sort of um, dispose of him and loot the, uh, the shop which I would like to think they won't do, but it's always possible, right? Elmer Barthen is not a warrior. For, for anybody who might be thinking, oh, he can get into a fight. No, commoner statistic block, that's it. He's not a warrior, so he does not get into fights. He will argue with the party, but not in a heated manner that uh, he thinks would lead to a, an open brawl. That's something he would want to avoid. Um, he cares for his family. Uh, he still has, um, or whatever family he still has. Now, the thing with Elmer Barthen's family is there's really no information in the adventure. So I've provided you, um, as I go through here, with a couple of options that you can pick. You can pick whatever you want. You can do it however, however you want. But he's, he's definitely um, cares for his family, whoever they still are. And he also cares for the, um, the people of... Fandolin, the, the general community. He's there to help provide a surface, service and also make a living. Uh, this is his home. He expects to, to stay here for the rest of his life. Uh, this is a growing community, so he's invested in making it grow into something better. There is, as I said, really no information on Alma Barthen's family members. Nothing is provided, so it's really up to the Dungeon Master to decide the details. I'm going to suggest a couple of options to you. So he could be a bachelor who never married and has no children and just lives in um, Fandolin. He might have married and his wife might have died and he, he's now widowed. Um, they may or may not have had children, so it's up to you to decide whether he does or doesn't. Um, his, or he might have a wife, which you'll have to build the information around and children um, or not it's you know maybe he he's got a wife but no children maybe he's got a wife and he does have some children you decide um, and it's really going to be completely up to you whether he has parents who have died or are still alive maybe um, some of them are still alive maybe just the father or the mother or maybe both of them or both maybe both of them have passed away and are buried close by or in a, some other location 
Alma does not know the location of Cragmore Castle. So if the players are looking for that type of information from from Alma Barthen, he can't give them the location of Cragmore Castle because he doesn't know where it is. Alma will not really know nothing about Iano Albrecht, who Sildar Hallwinter is trying to track down. He, he doesn't know anything about the Black Spider. He doesn't know that um, there's a, a drow called Neznar the Black Spider. He knows nothing about that information, and none of that information can be extracted from him. Um, he does not know who leads the Red Brand bandits. Even though, even though you as the Dungeon Master know that Iano Elbrick uh, does lead the Red Brands, and that he is Glass Staff, um, he has no knowledge of this whatsoever. All he knows is these red brand bandits come in, um, demand protection money, he has to pay them, that they run the town um, like, uh, um, really, like a tyrannical um, gang. Um, and that's really essentially all he knows. I, I did create a character called Lex, for those of you who might or might not want to use Lex, as a sort of a standout NPC within the red brands that you could use. I did show you an image of him just a second ago. I thought this image was good to use as Lex. And you can play Lex as you wish, but I think it's pretty simple. Um, he's got no compromise. He's um, arrogant, demanding, greedy, all of the, the things you would expect from a, a bandit or a thug. And, and flesh it out however you wish. Uh, in terms of finding this image on the internet, it's actually pretty easy. If you just type in uh, Red Brands D&D, &D, you should be able to find it without too much trouble. Okay, so that's everything I have on uh, Alma Barthen for today, for those of you who are interested. Now, if you found this information useful or informative, or educational please share and like the video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more stuff like this because I do this every week um, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos which I do quite often if you want to support my channel you supported my channel by watching this video this live stream and you um, can continue to support me by watching more of my videos I have quite a large series of videos on the lost mine of Fandelver you will find the playlist it's it's pretty easy to find, and there's, I think, close to 30 videos now. Um, some of them are edited, some of them are live streams. It's up to you to decide which ones you find most useful to you. So, um, I don't plan to do Patreon for 2019, but I do have affiliate links down in the description. So, down in the, in the description you'll find uh, the book depository and Amazon, where you can buy stuff online. I get a small commission. You pay exactly the same price. And uh, that helps support me continuing to do these videos and other topics that I cover as well. Now, um, this is your opportunity. If you're part of the live chat, uh, please start typing in your feedback, your questions, or just say hi to me. I will say hi to you. Trust me, I respond to as much as I possibly can. And I'm not a big enough channel that I would be ignoring people anyway. Uh, if you're not part of the live stream though, you can ask your questions and give your feedback down in the comments section. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, I'm not gone. Just give me a second. I need a drink of water. And I need to reposition myself just a little bit too. Just so that it's a bit easier for you guys to see me. Or for me to see you or something like that anyway. Okay, transferring over. There we go. You get to see my face now. All right, so not too many questions um, today, so that's uh, mostly just hi. Um, okay, so what have we got here? I've already said um, hi to Christian and Nick. Thanks for showing up, by the way. Okay, Darren. Oh, Dylan, sorry. Dylan Baxter. Hi, how's it going? My players cleared out Cragmore Hideout and saved Silda. Okay, good. Um, next session, when I open up, when I open up, Fandolin, would Sildar be more worried about Gundren or Iano? I think that because, and I've got a video on Sildar Hallwinter, by the way, if you want to go and watch it, there's, I believe, I believe that it's the live stream, so go check that out because it spells it out in more detail, that particular character. 
Um, I believe that um, Sildar blames himself for Gundren's capture. Um, I had somebody comment that um, he believed that it's more of a ruse on Sildar Hallwinter's um, part to try to um, expedite some sort of plan of rescue for Gundren. So you could play it out that way. But I think that um, Sildar Hallwinter is definitely more interested in the rescue of Gundren Rockseeker than finding out what happened to Iano. Particularly if finding out what, to, uh, what happened to Iano would take too much time. If he can't just walk into town and find him, and he needs to do a bit of um, legwork, I think that's not what he would do. I think he would be encouraging the player's characters to go after Gundren and find him as quickly as possible. Or at least a lead that will get them to wherever they need to go. Do, um, do your player's characters know that uh, Gundren is cur currently being held at Cragmore Castle? And do they know the location of Cragmore Castle? I guess that's the more important question to ask. Hi Nick, um, I'll get back to you um, Dylan, you just let me know once you're ready to type in whatever. Hi Nick, how's it going? Great work, just rolled my group through Cragmore Hideout and this video content have come at a, uh, couldn't have come at a better time. Oh good, I'm glad. So where do you think your your players' characters are going to lead themselves? Uh, are, they, are they planning next time once they've already gone, since they've already gone through Cragmore Hideout, do they know where Gundren is? Do they know that they have to go to Cragmore Castle or are they going to go to Phandalin first? Um, I guess questions that you guys can answer and I'll go from there. I think I've tried to provide as much information or questions that you might be asking with regard to um, Elma, but if there are other questions related to Elma, by all means fire them out. And as I've said before, I often will answer questions unrelated to the topic at the end of my videos. Uh, so you're welcome to ask questions. If it's a player question, um, I, I, I'm certainly willing to answer those. If it's unrelated to the topic, that's fine too. I'll answer those questions. I, I've never really had an issue with doing that. The only time I find it um, a bit um, awkward is when... Pe I don't want to answer uh, too many questions about Phandalin itself because that's going to be its own topic and um, the reason I'm doing the the NPCs that you know that you find in Phandalin first is to avoid uh, dungeon masters trying to introduce too many NPCs when the player's characters reach Phandalin and trying to drop too many adventure hooks all at once uh, unless you've got no other choice because the, the players are insistent that they talk to every single NPC in Phandalin, which is, like I said, why I'm trying to avoid doing that. Okay, I'm just waiting for some feedback. Um, I'm just going to have another drink of water because it's getting warm here. Uh, so Dylan and Nick, let me know if what you know, what your resp responses are. If I've answered your question, great. Uh, stones. How's it going, Stones? Gonna be clearing Cragmore Cave with my players tomorrow. So this is great. Oh, good. What would be useful to you at this present time? I have, I don't know if you're Stones, if I don't know, I've done a, a video on Clark. I've done a video on Sildar Hallwinter, if you might, you might find that useful. Um, I haven't done a video on the actual exploration of Cragmore Cave in... In detail there is a really old video uh, that I did on my phone uh, which is like an hour and a half long and there is a bit of information on certain locations within that ca cave if you know the, the Cragmore hideout um, you, you could check that out if you like but you'll have to sort of skip past some of the stuff to get to what you need I think that's pretty much everything okay stones what's that I actually just watched your Clark video and it was perfect good Right. Um, Clark is uh, is a fun character to play out if you get an opportunity. Sometimes it just doesn't doesn't work out that way. I've I've had dungeon masters express uh, that there have been multiple ways that Cragmore Hideout has unwound, in terms of how um, Clark is portrayed or the lack of portrayal, particularly if he gets ambushed. So. 
another drink of water. So um, hopefully I've managed to cover and answer Dylan and Nick's questions, or at least give them the feedback that they wanted. Look, there doesn't seem to be too many other um, questions coming through the live chat, so I'm probably going to end it here. Uh, what is happening for tomorrow? So tomorrow is my day off. For those of you who don't know, um, I have a day where I do crafting or painting. Tomorrow I'm going to work on the exclusive, well, is it exclusive? No, it's more the collector series Xantha Beholder miniature. I'm going to clean it up ready for assembly and then eventually I'm going to paint it. I will be painting the Albear before I paint the Beholder, but I want to put the Beholder together. I'll be doing that live. It'll take me about an hour, I guess. Um, and that will be running at about 1.30pm uh, New Zealand Daylight Time. As um, I've been told I should not be saying New Zealand Standard Time, it's New Zealand Daylight Time. Um, so that'll be tomorrow. That'll be the 11th of February 2019, 1.30 p.m. New Zealand's daylight time, okay? I will advertise it on the channel, as I normally do, okay? And you can come and join me, talk Dungeons and Dragons, talk anything you like, just talk rubbish, I'm fine with that, okay? Um, I also want to just point out, I did notify people, I had planned to do a video sort of talking about the topic, but... Um, uh, Draven Swiftbow has already put out a, uh, a review of the Dungeons and Dragons tactical maps reincarnated. Now a lot of these maps that he's reviewing and uh, are part of that pack are maps that I use in my adventures and also that I use in my videos. And I've had a lot of people ask me where I get those maps from. They are full-size poster maps, they are full color, they're very pretty, um, they're really handy because you don't have to draw stuff out, you just dump them down. Um, a lot of you will have seen the King's Road, I've, I've used that map so many times, I have a vinyl version rather than a paper poster map version, but that pack has 20 poster maps in it, and um, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, I think it's going to be a great start to 2019. That map, that map pack it just looks wonderful as far as I'm concerned provided you can get it at a reasonable price hi Joe how's it going Joe um, hi Fred uh, missed the stream have to watch the replay later yeah that's fine you can always catch up with me tomorrow Joe um, I know I know everybody else has got other commitments um, you can't always make it to the live stream and it's, there's no need to and hopefully people are enjoying the fact that they can watch the live stream later on once it's published in its entirety and also watch the edited down um, live stream as a, a tidier video uh, as well because I released that as a separate video now and I'm trying to make sure that I'm leaving about I'm taking about a week before I release those so you should be able to you know if you don't want to watch the live stream and it feels like it's a bit too long you can watch the edited version, uh, which is a lot tidy, tidier and a bit more streamlined later. You just got to wait wait a week. Uh, Ragnarok. Ooh, I like the name, Ragnarok. Um, love the stream. I try to catch it when it's live. Oh, good. I'm glad. I want it to be an opportunity for you guys to connect with me and ask questions. I don't really want to be the, the person that you you watch the videos and there's no sort of um, you know relationship I'm not like a super dungeon master I'm not a big channel I'm not a professional dungeon master I'm just like you guys um, the only difference is I put all my stuff on YouTube that's really all, all there is to it there's nothing else but hey thank you for everybody who showed up I'm gonna take off I'm gonna go and do some food shopping and then cook some food and, and, and try to relax. Maybe watch a bit of Critical Role. Um, I've been trying to watch Matthew Colville's um, live game or game session, but I'm finding it very difficult. So um, it's just too much time, you know. Critical Role, Acquisitions Incorporated, plus all the other YouTube channels putting out cool content. And I like to try to keep up with, um, with a lot of people's content. 
Um, so it's it's going to be an interesting day. Um, I'll be I'll be watching it all on my phone. Hooray for the cell phone. It does have its use, even though there are times when I think it's a, a drag. Okay, I'm going to take off and leave you guys. So have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Look after yourselves. Oh, what's this? What's that, Nick? Thanks, great stream. Looking forward to the next, um, the next, okay, good day from North Dakota, USA. You have a good time. So look after yourself. Don't do any stu and things stupid. Look after your P and the people that you love. And I will see you later.